Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we are going over Tazavesh, the Veiled Market hard mode, um, how to start it, and a super quick guide to each of the bosses and kind of what you want to do. So hard mode Tazavesh should be open week one. Um, you'll have to do a bit of gimmicky stuff to be able to activate hard mode on week one, and you will also miss out on the first boss on the first week, but after that you can just activate the hard mode at the beginning of the dungeon. Um, whenever you zone in. So first of all, to get to the Tezavesh dungeon, there's a short quest line that you start in Ouroboros. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do. Um, it's super quick. And after that, um, it takes you to the dungeon and you can zone in and start doing the dungeon. So if you want to do the hard mode, then you essentially just want to make your way up to the first boss, defeat the first boss. Then after the first boss um, room, you end up in a big open area where you can go down a flight of stairs and right next to a flight of stairs on the right side there is a vendor now if you talk to this vendor on the last page of the stuff he sells there is a necklace that you want to buy after the buying the necklace then you want to go to the Aumaiza oasis uh, it's the nightclub area and there is a bouncer standing in front of the nightclub who requires you to have a password to get in so this starts kind of a mini event where you have to deliver specific goods to specific vendors in that little like market area. Um, you'll have to do it three or four times and the last vendor that you deliver the goods to will give you the password. So the way this works is that, for example, if you pick up the alchemy flask, you have to take it to the guy that sells alchemy stuff. If you pick up a weapon, you got to take it to the guy that sells weapons and so on and so forth. So it's just a, like a mini event. Now, once you got the password, you can actually get into the club. And when you go into the club, just go down the left-hand side, hug the left wall. And at the end, there's going to be a guy hidden there who you can talk to. And he will actually take your neck and upgrade it. Now, once you've gotten your neck upgraded to the passably forged credentials, you can equip it. Go ahead and run back to the beginning of the dungeon. Talk to the guy that's standing right at the beginning next to the boxes on the right side. His name is um fatihad and you have to make sure that you're transformed into a broker so whenever you have the neck equipped just activate it and it will transform you into a broker and that's how you start hard mode so this is why i said it takes a little bit of a process normally you would go through do a normal run then the second try do a hard mode um but you want the 233 loot on week one so might as well do hard mode week one now once you have the credentials or the necklace upgraded you can actually talk to the guy activate hard mode and start the dungeon on hard mode so the first boss which your first time around you will not get to do on hard mode but he essentially just spawns a extra ad that you should kill at the beginning of the fight and that's pretty much the only thing different um the only things you have to look out for is that sometimes the boss will steal your weapon away toss it down on the ground and you will be silenced and you have to pick up your weapon to get rid of the silence the second thing is just be mindful if you are targeted by the stasis trap mechanic. Um, if the boss targets you, just run it away from the boss. And as soon as you get trapped, everyone, all the DPS in the group need to help break you out before the boss gets there. And besides that, it's just dodge AoE effects and kill the boss. So that's the first boss. Then moving down the list, you move to the second boss, which is the Grand Menagerie. Um, this is actually like a council style fight on hard mode you will have to fight multiple bosses at the same time on normal you just fight one at a time so the first guy honestly doesn't do too much he does an aoe run out of it then the second guy that comes out um Achility, who is a robot this is where things kind of become hectic so basically he will constantly shoot out orbs and only the person with the little blue circle debuff can run through these orbs. Everyone else will take damage from them. But if the person with the debuff runs around clearing up these orbs, they will actually gain a damage bonus. So whoever has the debuff at the time should run around clearing them. And keep in mind that the debuff, whenever it expires, bounces to the nearest target. So you can give it to a DPS if you want them to do more damage. Now... A big thing to keep in mind is that once the third boss spawns and you're fighting the second and third boss at the same time, this is where things become really hectic because you'll have to deal with mechanics like being sucked in, um, 
into like a whirlwind while dodging orbs. So you really want to finish off the second boss before kind of dealing with the third boss. The second boss will continue shooting out orbs, but as long as someone in your group with the debuff is picking them up, um, it's not too much to worry about. So after this, we go over to the mail room mayhem, which is the third boss of the dungeon. This one was still bugged when we were doing it. Essentially on mythic, the boss will spawn these briefcases that have a timer on them. And when the timer runs out, they all explode. So normally you have to toss these into the vents. However, on the hard mode, uh, you actually get rooted whenever you pick one up. So you essentially have to pick one up, toss it to your buddy, then toss it on. So it takes a little bit of teamwork to actually get it to the vents and um, to get rid of all of the briefcases. So if you have enough DPS, you can either forego dealing with the briefcases altogether. Um, so just bloodlust and burn the boss before they all explode or just use immunities when they're about to explode and you should be fine. Then we move on to Miska's Oasis. So this is in the jazz club. Um, there are going to be five instruments. Each one, each person in your raid will have to stand in one of the instruments to pick them up. And once you pick up the instrument, you will have to do like a mini game to gain stacks. Uh, for example, I had the trumpet, I believe in this one. And I just had to like press the extra action button whenever there were circles on the ground to dash through them to get a buff that made me deal more damage, uh, gave me haste. And on hard mode, you will get specific ads that will spawn throughout the encounter and hit people with specific instruments. Um, so you'll have to deal with two waves of ads um, and I believe three spe uh, special mobs altogether before you actually deal with the boss. So this one is pretty much all about just dodging predictable mechanics um, or telegraphed mechanics and making sure that whenever you're in the little intermission thing, you're doing the mini game correctly so you get more damage for the last phase. After this, we move on to Soazmi. So Soazmi is actually a very, very cool fight. This will require your group to work together to essentially get interrupts and dodge mechanics by using a teleport mechanic. So this boss will put up a wall in the middle of the encounter area pretty early on, and then she will start casting an ability. Now, the only way to get from one side of the wall to the other is using these little robots that move around. And there are two of each types of robots. There's two triangles, two squares, two circles. Um, and if you stand on one of them, it will teleport you to its matching pair. So if there is a circle on one side of the wall and a circle on the other side, you can stand in the circle robot to get teleported. Um, and this is how you move uh, through the wall, essentially. Now, on hard mode, the boss will cast three times, so you need to get three interrupts. I suggest just splitting up your group, um, half the group on one side of the wall, half the group on the other side, um, because if the boss, like, cast then teleports then casts again um it it's pretty tricky to get through if you get unlucky with the robots now there's going to be another mechanic that is a big circle that starts in a certain spot and starts growing once the circle is large enough you want to check which robot is in the middle of the circle whenever the circle spawns all the robots will get frozen so they will not be moving around so you have to make the decision of okay which robot am i going to run to to get teleported inside of the circle without hitting the edge. Because if you get hit by the edge, you take a ton of damage. Um, and then once the boss gets low enough, puts up another wall, so now the whole encounter area will be divided into four. So this is kind of where things get hectic and you need to make sure that you have at least one person who can interrupt in each of the four quadrants whenever the boss teleports and starts doing the mechanic or you know, just use immunities and kill the fight. So kind of up to you on how you want to deal with it. Then we move on to um, Hillbrandy. And so this is the, um, the Legion boss that you kind of teleport to. This one is actually a little bit tricky because it requires every single person in your group to, to work together on a mechanic that only one person is able to see on like how you should deal with it. 
So the first phase is fairly easy. The boss will do some telegraphed mechanics, such as like a frontal, AoE, stuff like that. And he will spawn two types of adds. The first type of ad will randomly cast an AoE. You must interrupt this because if the cast goes off, everyone takes damage and gets stunned. Um, anyone targeted by the fixate, it's like an orbital laser beam. You want to kite that around the edges of the room because otherwise you're going to run out of usable space. Um, then the third thing is there are going to be adds that spawn who start channeling into the boss. You want to stun these and kill them because they actually heal the boss. So after a specific timer, the boss will teleport um, away and four orbs will appear in the center of the room. Each one has a different color. Now in the back of the room, there's also a console that you can stand next to. So this means that one person in your group who is not picking up an orb needs to run to the console. They will be able to tell which orb should go into which corner of the room. Now, once that person actually tells your group, okay, maybe purple top left, um, yellow top right, so on and so forth, then the people who are carrying the orbs can run to the corners of the room and there's going to be one console in each corner they can interact with to dunk their orb. But it's important that the person who is kind of leading everyone tells you the correct one to go to because you don't know which one you should be going to. Only the person who is standing next to the console in the middle actually knows which orb should go into which corner. Um, so once you do this, then again, the boss will come down and essentially just repeat phase one. So I suggest bloodlusting the second phase just because it's time based. So if you don't kill the boss in time, then you will actually have to deal with another intermission. Um, and that can be quite tragic. Then we move on to Time Captain Hooktail. Uh, this is the Pirate Dragon. So the Pirate Dragon actually has quite a few mechanics uh, that are very annoying to deal with. First of all, do not stand behind the dragon because you get hook swiped um, and that's bad. Second of all, the dragon will put down these orbs um, or zones, looks like anti-magic zone, but they will actually slow you down so you want to move out of them. Um, and then lastly, the dragon will do an infinite breath mechanic at the tank. And this breath does a ton of damage and knocks you back. Uh, you want to make sure that the tank is either aiming this at the adds that spawn to kill them, or just aiming it away from the group if there are no adds. Other than that, you might get hooked from the ship from time to time, and you will also get bombarded from the ship. So it's just dodge telegraph mechanics, deal with adds, move out of slow zone, and don't stand behind the dragon while you kill him. Lastly, we have Solia. Um, this encounter on hard mode is actually quite interesting. So on hard mode, in the first phase, the boss will spawn two adds. You just kill them pretty quick, nothing to worry about. But after that, the boss will spawn a collapsing star. Now this collapsing star will have a total of four stacks in it. Each time someone touches the collapsing star, it will explode. The person who touched it will get knocked away and everyone else will get pulled towards the star. Um, so this can be very dangerous if everyone's standing close when the person activates it because you'll just get pulled in and chain activate it and instantly wipe. So everyone needs to be a fair distance away while the one person who wants to take a stack off the star runs into it, gets knocked away, everyone gets pulled in. On heroic or on hard mode, keep in mind that the first two people to touch the collapsing star will get a debuff that essentially makes it so they can't touch it again. Um, well, they can, but you might die because you're going to be taking 200% increased damage. So you want to rotate people getting a stack off of this star. Um, what we did is we just had one of our melee DPS, then as soon as the debuff from activating the star timed out, we had our tank run in, then again, as soon as the debuff timed out um, that dealt damage, you had the third person, then the fourth person. And you have to consume all the stacks on this star pretty quickly. Otherwise, when it explodes, it applies a stack of the vulnerability to your whole group and it deals damage. So anyone who already had a stack is probably going to die. Now, once you get to phase two, the boss will transform, heal to full and will spawn a couple of stars. Um, it's going to be actually five on hard mode and you essentially have to get rid of all five at the same time. And the way it works is that each person will get marked um, 
and the projectile is going to travel through each person in your group. You will see an arrow on the ground. So you just need to position yourself in a way that the projectile travels through the little star that you're standing next to. And as soon as you destroy all five at the same time, um, they will cease to be active. Otherwise, if you missed one, then you will just have to do it again and you will be gaining a stacking dot. So better do it on the first or second try or you will likely wipe. Um, after that, these stars will actually explode and shoot out tiny projectiles everywhere. So you just want to dodge those. Otherwise, they are likely going to kill you. So towards the end of this fight, you will actually have to deal with the collapsing star again. Um, it's a bit trickier in the second phase because the boss will also put down these big AoE circles that after a specific amount of time they detonate. So the collapsing star will spawn, the circles will spawn, you have to wait for the circles to go off, and right after they go off you have to start dealing with the star and consume all the stacks before it explodes on its own. And then kill the boss. So that's pretty much how the last boss works. Um, it is a bit tricky because on hard mode if you lose even a single player while you're in the second phase you just can't do the encounter since you have to deal with all five of the stars at the same time. So it means that if someone dies you have to wipe and run back. Um, keep in mind that there are teleporters to almost each boss or at least each area. Make sure you're activating those as you're moving through the dungeon um, to make sure that you have an easier run back. Thank you so much for watching this guide and let me know in the comment section below what do you think about Tezavesh hard mode? Are you looking forward to it? Um, on the PTR we were doing it at 213 eye level and it was fairly challenging. Um, so I assume on retail if they don't scale it up it's going to be a lot simpler um, just because you can outgear it. But if they do scale it up it could be a pretty fun dungeon. Again thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.